All right, we're going to introduce everybody on the panel. So, feel free to a uh, little bit about yourself, uh, what your positions are, and where people can find you. Feel free to like drop your links uh, in the chat. Um, we'll do like a plugging at the beginning and a plugging at the end. Um, so it's not like part of any of like the actual like discussion. So never worry about having like to say who you are during your opening statement or during your closing statements because I feel like I want people to focus on the topics. So we'll start with Sprout, then Nacho, then Biggs, uh, then LSP, and then uh, Roser if he's uh, finished, and then uh, finishing with Zan. So Sprout, uh, tell us about yourself, buddy. All right, my name is D Sprouticus. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash dsprouticus, twitter.com slash dsprouticus. I'm a constitutionalist conservative, although these past month or so, conservative has been called into question. Uh, so I guess I'm just a constitutionalist at this point. Um, but I, uh, if you like the takes, you can find me where I said previously. Looking forward to this debate. I am you guys can pro-immigration see to go into this uh, debate. So. All right, right? All right. You can see everyone American Nacho. Uh, yeah, I'm American Nacho. I'm a uh, I'm center right uh, with a with some some libertarian roots in there somewhere. Uh, I, uh, I I'm also on Twitch. I'm everywhere. I think I'm the only American Nacho for now. Uh, I mostly do gaming and stuff, but I, do, I have jumped into the politics in the past year, and I'm uh, I'm enjoying it, exploring the the political world. So if you want to come do that with me, you want to see a little game, and you want to see me suck at Rust and. Uh, dominate people at rocket league then uh come over and hang out a fellow rust degenerate yeah what's your rank in rocket league uh champ right now but my oh, highest is, uh, is like uh, gc so oh damn i don't know what like that scale is but that sounds very impressive is it like the is this like the pokemon unite like list where it's like expert is like the second what? rank they just like... took away grand grand champ was the highest rank and that's was i was like right there i'm like two mmr points rust below that and then they took game. that rank and they added another rank above it, so I'm like big, big sag. But you know, we'll get, we'll get there. So you said you were, you were, you were, you were but, GC, but then I'm still in like were. the top so that, two percent. That feels kind of disingenuous. Um, I've we're hit, to I, okay, now. I've hit it, but I'm I'm not, not this with a I'm lie. not like, words, okay? Like, <laughs> I can't claim it fully, okay? I don't nice. have a title. It's okay. All right, Biggs. Yeah, my name's Biggs. I'm a uh, center uh, libertarian, basically more right leaning, but. Uh, I try to have an open mind about things, kind of get down to the root of issues, trying to find real uh, solutions to the actual problems we're having. And I think that tonight's discussion should uh, be pretty interesting. And hopefully we'll be able to do that. Um, I do want to thank you, Hans, for having me on tonight and uh, thank all the panelists because you guys are all pretty awesome. I've uh, been involved in a lot of stuff with uh, many of you um, here and there. So I'm um, looking forward to this conversation and uh, hope we all have fun and keep an open mind. Thanks so much, Greg. All right. LSP, my dude. My dude. Hi, um, I'm LSP. I'm a liberal YouTuber. I make liberal YouTube political content once every six months or something like that. I, inconsistently, but usually a lot of it's st stuff content targeting you know, alt-right, race realism kind of stuff. Um, but I really love immigration issues. I'm here to talk immigration. Thank you to Hans for having me. I love all of you, uh, especially my man, Biggs. We've never met, but I've always been a big fan of you. So Thank for the you. last few minutes when I met you. You as well, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Um, IRI, what happened to my cool background? Um, I know what, I will not throw anyone under the bus, but uh, there was someone on the panel who could not join the whereby. So uh, we're not gonna not gonna name names. So, but we're gonna go uh, coincidentally to Xander Hall. Introduce yourself, buddy. <laughs> My name is Xander Hall. You can find me on YouTube and Twitch and my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. I'm a lefty. I talk about, um, you know, pretty progressive stuff. I generally lead more sock dem on most issues, uh, which is, you know, pretty progressive for America anyway. Um, and that's more or less all you need to know about me. Nice. What's the, um, never mind. What's your opinion on morally neutral things? Um, we're going to throw it lastly to Rose Wrist. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, wait, everyone, can you hear me now? Someone said in chat that I was quiet. Can everyone hear me? I can hear you just fine. Yeah, yeah you're fine. I hear you. Okay, cool. What did he say? So, like, someone in chat said that they couldn't hear me. So, all right. I, That's their I, problem. I, I, I've done the thing. I've done the thing. Yo, Carl, thanks for the raid, buddy. Everyone check out Carl. He's a great fucking base lefty who cares a lot about nuclear energy. All right, last but not least, Rose Wrist. It took me these entire opening statements, but finally... That didn't do anything. Okay, never mind. For fuck's sake, I'm so sad. Okay, 
Regardless, uh, hello, my name is Rosarist. I believe I'm the only European on this panel, so I will definitely be bound to experiencing some anti-European sentiments and discrimination, as I already have. In fact, it took me the longest out of anybody here to get pulled from the waiting room uh, into the actual call center. So I think that's, if that's, you know, an indication of anything that is to come, I better be prepared for this. I don't know what you're, uh, I, I can't, like, something happened to Rose Wrist. Um, uh, there's no anti-European uh, bias on this channel, and I would really uh, appreciate uh, these accusations not being thrown around. I, I don't like that. But uh, I hope I hope this happens. I hope this audio audio shit happens to uh, liberals throughout the panel. It's gonna make this a whole lot more interesting. Just the European yeah, I don't one. Know if anyone noticed, but there was a little uh, little microphone with a cross that appeared right when uh, Hans started speaking, and I wasn't the one that clicked on that button. But regardless, uh, my name is Roserist. I am a uh, a social democrat, progressive type person, and for the topic of this debate, I genuinely think uh, immigration is a pretty good thing generally. Um, so yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Oh, and if we all end up agreeing, we can talk about the best ways of like doing the good things. So, so I've had panels where they get spicy, and I've had panels where everyone agrees and we have a good conversation. So. I'm up for either. But with all that in mind, uh, everyone, hello, if you're tuning in uh, from someone else's chat or you've never met me before, I'm Hans, Hans of Ark here. Um, former uh, Nice Guy panel host, now uh, Joker Ark, uh, destroyer of uh, demons and uh, hater of all women. Um, so I love every single one of you. I'm really excited uh, for everyone to come see my panel. And uh, I'm excited uh, for tonight. We have a great talk on immigration with a bunch of great guests. And I hope you enjoy this. So. All right, all right. So our first topic of the evening is Border Patrol has recently been cited wielding whips on Haitian migrants. What are ways that we can reform our existing Border Patrol? And if you think that if you think it's necessary, if you don't, you're welcome to argue that we don't have to do anything and our mechanisms of enforcing immigration and border policy. So we are going to start uh, this uh, the opening here with Sprout and then we're going to go to LSP, and then American Nacho, then Rose Wrist, then Biggs, and then finishing with Xander Hall. And then for the closing statements, we'll go in the opposite direction. So, I'm going to give you 75 seconds on the clock. Sprouticus, topic one, go ahead, buddy. Awesome. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't do the fucking rules. Fuck. People haven't been on my panels before. Fuck. The no, rules. I just, 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 okay. just got to take my time. Is this gonna take no. up my time? Nope, nope. This is this no. actually, actually, yes. Uh, all right, so uh, while we're waiting uh, for 75 seconds to go. So if you haven't seen my panels before, my discussion format, fuck, I, I just completely forgot this. I assume everyone has seen my panels at this point. Uh, but like the intros and outros, each person gets one minute. I'm gonna raise that to 75 seconds because no one can stand or a fucking minute for some reason uh, for each opening and closing statement for the topic. After that, we'll use a hand raising system. Raise your hand uh, after the opening statements and I'll put you on a list. We'll go down the list. Uh, We'll crossing up names as we go. If you raise your hand, I give you a thumbs up. It means you're on the list. If you, if I already give you the thumbs up and you're on the list, don't raise your hand anymore. You can't be on the list more than once. Gish galloping is dumb. I call this the Rob Nora rule. Um, in, the, in this case, that means you have to keep your speaking time under two minutes at 30, uh, at 90 seconds. Uh, I will give you this little signal that you have 30 seconds remaining. And then at 10 seconds, I'll give you this little signal that you have 10 seconds remaining. And at two minutes, I'll, I'll yell at you to finish your sentence. And if you keep going, I'll scream at you or I'll, I'll mute you. Are, the, are those cards improving in quality? I think that they look a little better this time. Right? Like you like before. Yeah, yeah. They're mm -hmm. actually... I, the Production quality is moving on up there, buddy. Yeah. I noticed it right away. See, well, from backwards cards to rightwards cards to rightward cards in bold. B Biggs cares about me, all right? He, he, he understands the grind, all right? And then... Uh, interruption sometimes. Please don't interrupt someone while they're speaking. If you have a specific question or contention, uh, just say a quick response after they're done while I'm throwing it to the next person, uh, and then you can ask their question, uh, get all that sort of stuff done. If someone calls you out, if someone says, yo, uh, Rose Wrist's lighting is giving me nightmares, um, and he's a big dummy dumb head, uh, we have to give him a full two minutes to respond to anything that someone says. We need to put a buddy. I love you. I'm not trying to bully you. Oh my gosh. Now, I know. I was, I was playing along. I was playing along. No worries. I'm not going to This needs a seizure uh, warning for his uh, his channel now, yeah. I think. Or whenever oh, I turn on and off my lighting. I, I bully children, and then I make them go to school. He's not a child, though, but, like, but he's still a minor. Um, so everyone, just keep that in mind on the panel in terms of being spicy. We have we have a 17 year old on the panel tonight, okay? Um, and he's more well researched than like literally everybody here. So like, no one talk shit either. All right? Yeah, probably. We'll blow you out. Wait, um, isn't he right. from Europe? Yeah, damn right. 
Okay. Hey, you so the you're, like an, you're, you're an adult. If then. I want to win this debate whenever hey, you guys say anything, you can all drink. I have to say, if you no, you can drink, you're an adult, no, man. Okay. Not at the minute. I couldn't drink from Sweden, where I was originally from, you're nor right now in the Netherlands. From this side. Obviously, I would never drink anything illegally. I would spontaneously combust should I drink That's, underage. But I regardless, of that, I, I yeah. definitely don't participate in illegal activities. Yeah, so exactly. true. Exactly. No illegal activities happening right now. Never. And if I really need to win the debate after any statement from you, I'll just say "na education moment" and then just you know leave the floor. And I think I'll uh, I'll be good enough. Ooh. Oh, yeah. But anyway, anyway, and then if uh, if the question if the question or the call out uh, goes into like a longer conversation, I'll normally give it about four to five minutes before I pull it back to our regular discussion. I will only be moderating, so uh, rightoids uh, have no fear. I love you. You're safe here. I will not. Uh, jump in to tell you how your ideas are, are big, dumb, and bad um, because I uh, don't want uh, people to think that I'm a biased mod. So, does everyone understand the rules? Give me a thumbs up if you do. Alright. Awesome sauce. Alright. I will read them again at half speed explicitly for Sprouticus. Um, discussion format. Intros and outros. One minute uninterrupted for opening... Oh, you, you it. It. it was the first. It, it was so the first proud. sentence. It was the first sentence I didn't quite get. <laughs> right now. All right. So with all that actually out of the way now, fuck. Uh, we're gonna go the order that I described previously. Sprout, seventy-five seconds. The Haitian uh, migrant uh, stuff and how do we reform our existing border patrol and mechanisms of enforcing it immigration and border policy and if we do that how should we do that or should we not do that at all 75 seconds on the clock buddy go ahead okay so first off i need to address your question and let you know that your question actually has uh some disinformation in it Game the stop. question says that they were using whips it's come out they were not using whips they were holding on to reins to control the horse so these are not whips they're not going on whipping um haitian immigrants that were trying to get onto the uh to get onto the united states that was not happening That's and excellent. even Thank the you. photographer even the photographer uh responding to um ks ktsm tv says that he didn't see the agents whipping anyone um so with all that being said i think that the border control agents were trying to stop immigrants from entering the country i don't think there was anything nefarious in this action i think that the uh, border immigrants were just fine in what they were doing um uh, i think that uh they were trying to stop illegal immigration, which is their job. Um, I didn't see anyone get hurt. I didn't see anyone get uh, even kind of bruised from this. One person fell back into the lake, but as, as much as I know, as far as injuries. Um, so I think the border control did a good job, and I think this uh, this should be praised and not gone down upon. Thank you so much, Sprout. And uh, my apologies for that misinformation. I saw that uh, thing on Twitter like everybody else. And I read that article, and uh, that's a failure of mine. Uh, I will we, we'll explicitly like be right. talking only then right. again, then about uh, the situation uh, involving the Haitian migrants and uh, the processes and policies of the Border Patrol. Thank you so much, Sprout, for pointing that out for me. I wish you had done that before, uh, but I appreciate the dunk. Destroyed! Hans, misinformation on his panels. You got me already. What a great start. There's the thumbnail, I've boys. Also, I've, also, I've also noticed no women, so... Oof, that's so true. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> It's it's apparent it's it's for their safety, you know. Like I don't want to I don't wanna, yeah, I don't want to debate anybody. Time you're on this panel. Like all right, LSP seventy five. I am memeing too close to the sun. I am. <laughs> all right, seventy five seconds, buddy. Go ahead. Um, firstly, hello everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, yeah. As to the question of how we reform this, uh, I have a hard time fathoming the idea that we that the 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 wealthiest, most powerful country in the world with the the power to totally destroy it six times over if it wanted to, when once would be enough, is under threat by an army of starving Haitians. Um, sending the Border Patrol uh, to round these people up for the purposes of deportation seems a fool's errand to me. These people are seeking are, are fleeing uh, uh, political instability in Haiti, economic instability in Haiti. The president was just recently assassinated. They recently just had a disastrous earthquake. All sorts of reasons they don't want to be in Haiti, and we're standing in the way of them uh, coming to a, a, a source of refuge. These people don't need border patrol agents. They need doctors. They need food. Um, so, you know, as to the question as to like how we reform this, we we take the militarism out of the border patrol and we make it a humanitarian organization. That would be the answer. Thank you so much, LSP. All right, American Nacho. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, 
I also was going to say similar things what uh, Sprout pointed out, was, which is just that um, they're just doing their jobs. They're using the horses because that's what they have to use. These are the tools they, they have to use at the border. You can't be like driving around trucks in, in the, the landscape that is the border with all the ravines and everything else, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, it might look like it's a bad image, but they're, they're just using the tools just the way they do. Nobody has a problem with um, cops being on horseback riding around at the fucking Mardi Gras and arresting people from horseback there. There shouldn't be any problem with it here. And, yeah, they weren't whipping people. Um, <clears throat> the the Border Patrol has notoriously been underfunded, uh, so obviously it needs more funding. It needs to be, I probably would say, it needs to be its own branch instead of being uh, like under the umbrella of like the DOD or whatever it is. <laughs> Um, and th this isn't something that's just our our government, like the Mexican government, our our southern uh, uh, country mates there. They they have a problem with this stuff too. This is not just an issue that is on our side that we just want to kick everybody out. Uh, this th this causes problems for them. The cartel uh, has a multi billion dollar industry um, trafficking people across the border, and um, that's not going to change without some serious uh, some serious taking the problem seriously, basically. So, thank you, Nacho. All right, Rose Wrist, go ahead, buddy. Um, yep, I can start with something specific to the uh, Haitian situation, then maybe some broader things in regards to border patrol or handling of immigration or refugees generally on the U.S. border. So when it comes to stuff like that, most of it has um, already been said for the most part. I think one thing that is worth adding here is that I believe that we should have better, you know, scrutiny when it comes to non-federally approved or overlooked um, sort of like border patrol programs. So, for instance, in Texas, there are programs like Operation Lone Star, for instance, which um, it's probably a good idea if we have some form of like federal transparency or some form of federal approval there, just so we have an idea of like what's going on in a more transparent way than having like states individually be able to sanction their own sort of like border patrols to do their thing. Um, but generally, like aside from that, um, the issues right now when it comes to issues on the southern border of the United States of America, um, the White House recently put out a 21-step White House plan for the handling of the situations. I think that was a mixed bag, although generally I think it's pretty good, and I think that most of the proposals are probably going to be pretty useful when it comes to handling the current situation. I think the United States of America has to allow for more refugee capacity. The capacity that the Biden administration has said that they want to take in for this year seems fairly low, and it could probably be improved. Uh, then generally things like reversing the policy on deportations and especially the use of Title 42 as a legal justification for being able to sort of like send back or deport or reject migrants at the southern border uh, has been criticized by very many institutions, among them, for example, the European Union. I mean, sorry, the European Union, the United the point, Nations, um, for maybe uh, violating international law. So, yeah. Thank you. And uh, sorry for that. Uh, you're just going a little bit over time. No problem at all. Don't worry. You, you, the speaking time uh, for the general is like about 45 seconds longer. So like if you feel like that was too short, you'll have more time uh, in the general for the discussion stuff. All right. Biggs, 75 seconds, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, um, I'm actually I'm, I'm usually pro um, small government. But when it comes to things like the border, that's like one of the main functions of the federal government, right, is to keep a sovereign border. So I think this is something where we can put more money into it. Um, I think having things like better infrastructure um more people involved um i i liked what the left was saying i think that we need to have people like caseworkers involved and like pe helping people uh get through these policies um and get through these processes to become citizens and apply for a refugee ship and all that stuff but i think that uh it is one of the main things that the federal government currently is failing at um especially when we had um biden saying um during like we're either right before or right after the actual election and him getting into office was basically saying something like there was a uh, surge of the border and like having people come here. Um, I know the Haitian crisis is what we're talking about right now. So like that's more of a um, uh, like a natural um, phenomenon, you know, with the earthquake and stuff like that. And also, like you said, the um, the stuff with the um, political unrest. But I think we need to have a better process for these people to get there. But I think the federal government is currently failing at protecting our border. And that's why we need to have uh, more um people and more infrastructure. Thank you so much, Biggs. All right, uh, Zan is the last one for the opening statements. Everyone is now welcome to start raising their hand uh, while he's speaking to be put on the list for the general, uh, which will be about 40 minutes long. So LSP was first. I see literally uh, everybody. So it's going to be LSP, uh, Sprout, American Nacho, uh, a rose, and then uh, Dan was Biggs. before me. So we could oh, 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 Zan was before him? Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I'll put everyone on the list in that specific order. Zan, uh, 75 seconds for your opening statement, buddy. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I want to start by saying Sprout is right about the um, the photographer coming out and saying that uh, he did not see anybody whipping uh, immigrants or refugees at the border. Um, however, there is still an investigation going down. And he did say that it's understandable people saw it that way because he was swinging that thing around and did look that way. Um, but I, I don't. Wh one thing I want to say is I don't know why conservatives take such a hard stance against illegal immigration. Most immigrants that are coming from south of the border are going to vote more along the lines that they agree with, as far as uh, as like traditional values and whatnot go. So that's actually something that's always confused me. Um, as for the way the border border patrol acts and how we deal with problems coming up from south of the border, it seems like there's a lot of other policies and other methods we can go through besides deporting and trying to get rid of these immigrants, illegal or otherwise. Um, to try to solve these problems, as just criminalizing these people seems to cause greater problems than not. Thank you so much, Zan. All right, uh, bring in the spice. So right now, our list is going to be LSP, Sprout, Nacho, Zan, Rose, and then Biggs. Uh, remember, you can't be on the list twice, uh, so, it's, so it's pretty stacked. Like I said, our, gen our, opener, our general is going to be for about 40 minutes. If we want to continue it for longer, I'll, I'll ask if people are still heated and want to keep going at about 10 minutes left, and we'll see where we all feel about it then. So... All right, LSP, two minutes on the clock, buddy. Go ahead. But you just said I get forty minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so the thing I wanted to respond to, like the big thing that immediately set off alarm bells, was an American. All right, uh, Sprout, go ahead. Just... <laughs> okay. Wait, so no, LSP, LSP, it's okay. Go ahead. Know, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the thing that immediately set. <laughs> you're lucky. You're adorable. So the thing that immediately set off alarm bells in my head was in American Nacho's opening statement, he described the, the Border Patrol uh, as a massively underfunded agency. So I decided, go look it up, because that doesn't sound right. There's no way. Uh, we've experienced such a surge in immigration since the, the, the naughty, since the turn of the century. There's just no way. Uh, so I did. Immediately, I, I found our Border Patrol budget has tripled since the year 2000. Uh, it, it's been quite an increase. And Border Patrol staffing, likewise, has well more than tripled. Um, we are certainly not an understaffed, underfunded border patrol. Um, beyond that, I would just echo Zan's point. Like the the costs of criminalizing the movement of people seems to be, it seems misplaced. That there's so much all you're doing is making criminals of people who could otherwise be useful to this this country, this society. If you were truly an American nationalist, you would you would take this to heart that maybe you can reappropriate some labor in better areas. These people want to come here, and there's certainly businesses that want these people here. It grows the economy. Why not integrate these people in better? Thank that, you. That's, that's like a minute. Yeah, and that was that a. Uh... Was that that was directed like specifically at Sprout, right? Um, no, but, American. I was responding to American oh. Nacho's opening where he said Border Patrol was underfunded. It's not. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I'll put the thing in my in yeah. the sources. Yeah. No worries, uh, <laughs> Nacho. You're, uh, I'll give you about like one minute to respond. Uh, maybe like a brief back and forth if you if you really need to, and then we're gonna throw it to Sprout. So uh, yeah, just really quick. Like, their yes, their their budget has tripled and their staffing has tripled, but it's it's gone from like. Like, like in places like Arizona, where they have like one of the largest expanses of the border, they, they went from like 2,500 uh, border patrol agents in uh, like somewhere in the 80s to like, uh, like 15,000 today. Like, it's not like this, ma like you're covering thousands of miles of border. So tripling, it's like tripling 100, like, okay, you have 300 now. Like, yes, it's increased, but it needs to increase more and it needs to be taken more seriously. And it probably needs to be removed out from just the umbrella of of the DOD. I can't remember which department's under, but it's not it's not its own entity. Like we don't have a separate system for immigration. So that's what I'm saying when I when I was pointing that How out. How many is enough? Is this needs to so be its own thing. It needs to have its own separate budget from this and not just be under the. You know, what I'm, does that make sense? Yeah. Um. Uh. Zan, I see you. If someone could uh look up it in Google, um, what department's under, just to make sure for the purpose of this conversation that we're not. Uh, spreading any more informa uh, misinformation yeah. than necessary. Um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, Department of uh, Homeland I Security, that's what it is. Okay, cool. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, am I allowed to respond or? Uh, yeah, br uh, brief, like, brief lost word, and then we're throwing to I only need like 30 seconds. Uh, I don't know that making it its own agency is going to solve any of the problems with funding you seem to think exist. Um, as for your claim that like the Southwest border, like you, you specifically brought up Arizona, um, you can see its growth. Like the, what I linked shows you its growth over time right uh it doesn't seem like it's going down it's it's only going one direction you you can see the fiscal year 2020 at the end and you compare that with fiscal year you can go with like 2000 or, or 1992 we're employing plenty of border control agents the issue with at the border is not one of security it's one of politics 
this would be this is not a problem for law enforcement. This is a problem for our political leaders to solve. Thank you, LSP. All right, now we're gonna throw it to Sprout. Go ahead, buddy. Okay. So this is kind of in response to what Xander Hall said. Um, like, why is the right not more in for illegal immigration if people from the South are going to vote that way when they come into the nation? Um, I'll give you one very simple reason that the right is against it. Besides that reason is that, or I mean, aside from that reason, is that we don't want people to come into a nation and be absolute monsters similar to MS-13. I'm not saying everyone who come across is it is a monster i'm saying that everyone who come everyone who come across illegal has a higher chance of being like ms-13 or someone who's going to do danger in our country um aside from that i do want uh people who are not in america to be able to get into america unfortunately you have a very long line and you're slotted to wait in that line for god knows how long um and to where the point to where some countries call it the um call it winning the lottery it's a lottery um to go over to america so just take those into heart but that's the end of mine okay. uh xander hall you were added you're welcome to briefly respond before you throw it to nacho yeah so these large criminal gangs such as ms-13 have so much power and so much um resources behind them that uh like cracking down on these random immigrants trying to cross over the border is not going to affect them they've got the money they've got the resources to get in here get whatever they want to get in here however they like they come in through ports of entry they have um as many people here know i'm sure uh they have the uh the government uh the mexican government in their pocket uh they have plenty of power to get in no matter what uh they can get in legally and um even when it comes to most illegal immigration most of it is done through legal ports of entry overstaying visas and whatnot um this is just not a realistic expert expectation on how to stop like criminal gangs like ms-13 from getting in or getting drugs or human trafficking in the best way to do this would be to decriminalize these uh immigrants that they feel safe enough to go to the police and snitch on um on these organizations like ms-13 and I would be 100. Oh, sorry. No, no. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you both another two minutes just for a back and forth, however you want to do it. And then we'll throw it to Nacho. Okay. No, I, I think you bring up a good point. I think that illegals shouldn't be afraid to go to the police. I think if the illegals are going to the police about something, then that information cannot be used against them. Um, if they come out and say that they don't have, uh, that they're not legally in the country, that cannot be used against them for reporting a crime. Um, Even if that's true, though, how many cases do you think there have been for, for example, like a bunch of friends are at a party and one of them has a drug overdose and they don't go to the police because they're scared they're going to get in trouble, even though chances are they won't if they just call the cops and leave. Um, the, actually, the threat that law of possible changed. legal, the th Well, that doesn't matter, though, because the threat of possible legal um, ramifications for turning in um, or giving any info to the police or the government about these gangs, is, it's scary. You know, you've, it's like, do I really want to risk it? Um, they're not going to do it. They're just not. So what if we make it like legal for them there that there will be no um there'll be no action taken against them if they report to the police. If they're that's in, in this... sanctuary cities. Do you support sanctuary that's not, cities? That's not sanctuary cities though. Sanctuary cities means that they're not gonna help the federal government look for any immigrant, not just the ones that aren't violent and the ones that are reporting crimes. That's not a sanctuary city. Right. Um, I mean, it, it seems like sanctuary cities are where most a lot of immigrants like to go because they're they feel safer there. When there's a, a risk, when you're like an illegal immigrant, and there's a risk that if you come into contact and start discussing these types of things with the government, there's always going to be that thought at the back of your head, like, "Fuck, I'm not I'm not like naturalized. I'm not like a a full on legal immigrant here. They now they've got my name and shit. They've got me in the system. They're going to be worried about shit like that. Regardless of how realistic those expectations are, that's still going to be a massive worry. And some of the largest criminal gangs in history have been taken down by informants and snitches. So you don't want to make these people too afraid to come out and say, hey, yeah, this is what's up. Uh, Sprout, a brief final word, then we're going to throw it to Nacho. Okay. I, I just think that, that I think I think if we make it public, then they will be more enthused to tell the police about crimes that are going on. I'm pretty sure illegal immigrants, just like American citizens, don't want to live in a city full of crime. Um, and so with that being said, I just think that, yeah, I, I think that that would be a good solution if it's publicly said to where illegal immigrants understand that. Um, that they'd be able to help us report crimes and just not have that used against them at that time. If it comes up at a different time, they're a legal immigrant, they're, they're an illegal immigrant, then it can be actionable, but not that specific time. All right. Thank you, Nacho. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Sprout. Uh, we're going to throw it now to Nacho and then Zan. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, like the Biden, so the oh. Biden administration, 
If well, I had time, wait, I would have oh, I think it wasn't me and Biggs going to be crime, next? But... No, we haven't. You, okay. you, you, you said that uh, we're Zan... still going the list. Uh, we're going uh, down the list, but if someone, if, but uh, we were going down the list, and the list was um, because you said Zan was in front of you. The list was LSP, Sprout, Nacho, Zan, uh, Rose, and Big. But if you pick a fight with somebody and like and ask someone like a specific okay. question, they have to clarify that doesn't count as their time on the list. Like if someone asked you a question, you responded. I wouldn't take you off the list because uh, because I feel like you know people... it's loaded up now though, so ready to go. But go for it, Nacho. No problem. Uh, I totally fucking brain farted on what I was going to say. I was like ready to go. It's because of my interruption. I'm yeah, yeah. No, go ahead, though. It's fine. I'll remember it. It'll come back to me. I made notes. All right. No worries. Uh, Zan, go ahead. Again. Oh, I, I was going to I was gonna respond to what uh, Sprout said. Uh, from my understanding, most illegal immigrants commit uh, less crime than native-born American citizens, most likely due to the fact that um, they're already uh, treading on thin ice in their minds. Like, if I get into legal trouble, I mean, God knows what could happen next. Um, most of the people coming over the border are not uh, criminals. Okay, we should just take that as a fact say come on into our country it's a completely open border just well don't walk we have right police over. here to deal with crime yes but should we allow the people who did 9-11 to enter the country probably not who did 9-11 well, they're dead <laughs> what do you mean like they can't I, I, do, do 9-11 they already well, died but i'm saying would you have liked them to be in the country would you have liked there to be no vetting um and i don't think anyone's like talking about no vetting was over? there was there wedding was there vetting before 9-11 as well there was vetting, but what I'm saying, what Wait, I'm saying is, someone who gets through vet, someone who gets through vetting, okay, would you like that to happen, yes or no? Wait, is anyone talking about for, getting rid of people vetting? to go through oh, vetting? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, First, some kind of vetting. No, would be nice. no, not not for okay. vetting. I'm asking like, if they were to not go through vetting, and I mean, I guess if they were to just come on over, yeah, not go through vetting, and just open border. If the border's open, we tore down all the walls so you can literally just walk across. And then you're supposed to go to these betting stations. People skip between it, right? Do you want that happening? Um, probably not. Okay, so I, I mean, don't it, know it depends. Why. Obviously, like the, most of the people who are going to cause any serious problem are going to get in anyway, right? We're like, I, I'm not fully caught up on it because I was uh, a little baby shitting in a diaper when 9/11 happened. But I'm pretty sure the um, the people who hijacked those planes weren't uh, American citizens, were they? They, they immigrated oh, legally they, and they were vetted. I, oh, well, that, that actually were well, offers more vetting, to my point. Yeah, people want to do bad shit are going to get in no matter what. <laughs> The vetting in 2000 was much less than the vetting now. I can attest to that. The vetting in 2000. Well, yeah, after 9/11, things have gotten way crazier, Okay, yeah. so someone who even gets through vetting, um, then would not get through vetting now. I don't think that we would have the people who did 9/11 in the country now. Um, I'm just saying that people should be able to walk across, not be vetted. Like what's happening? They're just literally released into the country and be like, okay, yeah, just come for your come for your court date. Um, but it's ridiculous. Right. They, so they should just, we're gonna criminals here in America? Sorry, really, I just want to ask this question. Yeah, la, la, criminals, last one, last one. Should uh, citizens who commit crimes be deported? Citizens, where would they be deported to? Yeah, somewhere. Why would you want them deported? Or if there was like a pocket that dimension, question makes no into, sense. That question, question makes absolutely no sense because what? that means you had to I'm come from you somewhere. Want them out of the country. No, they're citizens of this country. Okay, so you think that citizenship kind of uh, offers something to someone's, like, uh, uh, rights to be here, their humanity to some degree? Being a legal citizen does, not necessarily citizenship, or a legal resident, I should say, not necessarily citizenship. Matter. So you, at you attach some, like, moral worth to being a citizen over being an illegal immigrant? A citizen has was born here and called this place home, or immigrated here, and then stayed here for a certain amount of time. I don't know how long the time is, so you can come up with that stat by yourself. But stay here amount okay, of time, passed pass the citizenship test, now they're a citizen. It's not just people who are born in America that happens, but I think citizens, yes, are more important than legal residents. Legal residents are more important than illegal aliens. Like that That's the rank structure in my mind. All right, we're going to pull it back now. Um, if you want to use the expatriation thing, uh, the best example that is the Phantom Zone from Superman. They can put like people uh, in there from any like point in time, and it's like it's its own little pocket dimension. You can call it the Phantom Zone. Uh, Rose Rose has been waiting extremely patiently. We're gonna throw it to Rose and then to Big. So go ahead, buddy. 
All right, got a big notepad locked and loaded here. Okay, so when it comes to the first conflict, which was between Nacho and LSP, when it comes to the funding at the border, it's true that the budget has multiplied by three, but there still seems to be some forms of issue when it comes to workload. So, for instance, when you look at the performance or just yeah, general so experiences there, from here. people working through Border Patrol, things like, for instance, like their suicide rate is astronomically higher than most other professions in the country. It's three times higher than that of an average law enforcement officer. And from just like general testimonials and statements that's been made from border enforcement agencies there seems to be some issue when it comes to like workload or employment or stuff like that so yeah th there is a bit to talk about here but there is certainly some issues when it comes to like um issues in relation to this now um solution to that though are some of the more long-term solutions we can do to change the way border pull uh, border patrol agencies function uh in the united states of america so things like, for instance, um, doing things like abolishing the drug war is absolutely going to cut on at least on more of the dangerous jobs that the drug patrol agency have to, you know, like go out and do. It's going to incur like a lesser like stress level or threat to the life to people that do the border patrol stuff. Generally, things like uh, more like collaboration within trade partnerships or maybe working within existing ones like the USMCA in order to like delegate responsibilities or funding to make more areas more like desirable to a larger range of people trying to solve maybe core issues in relation to um to mexico or countries from the southern border a lot of it stems back to the drug war so there's that as well and then just general rehauling of immigration processing so for example looking into things like naturalization looking into other ports of entry especially other ports of entry where there's more like like drug trafficking and stuff going on than the southern border necessarily so yeah that would be sort of my um, my other solution to that type of issue when it comes to to overworking of uh of border patrol agencies now when it comes to what spartacus said when it comes to crime rates and stuff like that and ms-13 and stuff like that um i will say and they education moment on this one because like literally all the at least the reputable literature on this topic says that the per capita likelihood of committing crime among illegal uh, migrants is even lower than that of native born citizens and uh, also this goes for drug offenses as well for ms-13 a big reason behind that is probably due to the drug war so that would probably be the most effective way to cancel Thanks, that note by attacking like illegal migrants so to say um now, when it comes to the fact that things like, you know, it can't be used against them if they go forth and they, uh, they like, report a crime, uh, and then they can't be, like, deported or whatever because they outed themselves as an illegal migrant. Uh, even if that were, I, I'm not quite sure if that's the case. I'm not, like, I wasn't aware of this before, Hack, but um, despite this being the case, probably, um, there are still another conflationary factors there that still prevent or disincentivize that from happening. So, for instance, stuff like familiarity with the laws, like what you right. just talked about, could be one of the reasons. Trust in police could be another one. And, uh, and last thing on vetting in 9-11, no one's talking about getting rid of vetting, and I don't know why we're talking about 9-11. I wasn't even born then. I was minus two years old at that time, so... Uh, I wasn't. That's, that's beyond so, my I mean, it's good to know you guys... You guys are babies. Back. Just little babies. Fair enough. Thank you so much, Roserist. Uh, we're going now to Biggs. Uh, so... Uh, Biggs is the last person on the list, so everyone, uh, remember to keep, if you want to keep, Demon like, if, like engage in the conversation, keep raising them hands. Uh, yep, so I see Sprout, and then Nacho, and then Rose. Uh, so we're gonna go to Biggs, and then we're gonna go to Sprout, Nacho, and then back to Rose. So, uh, Biggs, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, so, um, one thing that I think that, um, all of us can agree on is, uh, and again, this may be something we talk about later on, but immigration is a good thing right we have if we have positions that need to be filled for labor especially things like farming labor um low skill labor like having immigration is a good thing however we do need to have some um vetting like you said rose and like you know you're not against vetting obviously i don't think anybody here is against vetting but i think there needs to be a process and i think one thing we can do is stream like that pro streamline that process to help make it easier and less uh, convoluted to become a citizen. What I think we're seeing now is we're having these people rush the border with these asylum claims and things like that. And obviously we do feel for them. And as LSP kind of said at the beginning, um, kind of like um, lending to the humanity of things. Like obviously we don't, we don't, nobody here wants to see people suffering, but we have to have a process. And that's the thing that people, I think um, on the left, they want to make it so easy that we can just let these people come. But the problem is, is we need to have a way to help them succeed along with um, helping make sure we're keeping our country safe. But one of the things that I also think we're completely missing with this, and I kind of looked into some information, is why are these people coming to America, right? Like, obviously, America is, to me, I think, one of the best places to live in the world. But they're coming through countries like Mexico. And I did a quick Google search. And, um, the um, average Haitian uh, income is anywhere on, you know, it's a spectrum. So anywhere I saw from... $1,200 a year to $7,000 a year, right? 
So obviously that's pretty low income, right? That's poverty level income. These people are barely surviving. You look at Mexico and it jumps up to $16,000. So what I don't understand is if these people can make lives in Mexico and things like that. And that's typically what we have as far as uh, immigration policy and refugee policy is they're supposed to go to the first country that they step onto that's able to help them and um, accept them, right? But these people are coming to America because of policies and because of rhetoric that people like Joe Biden have said when they're saying surge the border, they're saying we're gonna let all these people in. Now, I am all for if people are already here and they're making, you know, um, income and they're you know paying taxes like obviously i think there should be a process to get them um citizenship but i think these people trying to skip the line and bypass those processes are a problem especially when they're unaccounted for and they're um not properly um vetted and go through the process right. thank you yeah, quick just quick follow-up one sentence yeah uh, oh uh, yeah everyone remember you're allowed to say quick response like if you have a clarifying question like while i'm throwing it to like the next person so yeah go ahead rose Rist. yeah i don't think that characterization of biden's opinion on what's going on right now at the border fits at all biden has actually on multiple occasions explicitly like like discouraged people from coming to the united states of america right now and said hey we're setting it up don't come to the u.s right now because we we're, we're not ready do you so, not do you yeah. not do you disagree that he has said it within the last um 12 months surge the border come here he said um, both he, things correct he probably said both things, but when you said it like okay, that, okay. it like it was just one thing at the exclusion of the other. So I'm saying the most up to date. So what do you think desperate have, people would be wanting to yeah, do? Yeah, I mean, once they took office, yeah, and then they said, hey, please stop coming to the border. But the whole campaign, it was like, yeah, we need to let everybody in. And everybody on the left and all the Democrats are basically like damning Trump. Like, if, can you imagine if right now if, the, if, if people were riding on horseback and capturing people and Trump was in office? The, the memes would be off the charts, the political cartoons, it would be like sure. images okay. beside the KKK, like, right. at, but at least, right. at least left us would be at the border. Like, okay, yeah. so for example, the reasoning behind that, why like the, the rhetoric or like the discussions of this change is because you have seen like a, a very big, you know, like, you know what you're talking about, if you're going to talk about like the rhetoric, like before uh, Biden's election, like, I don't know if people are going to make decisions on whether or not they want to make the entire migration before you even knew who was going to like win for president, right? But other reasons why the rhetoric has changed is because the migration wave and the amount has changed dramatically. And this has been because of things like further fallout from COVID when it comes to economic recessions, um, people that have been deported under Title 42 by Donald Trump returning because Title 42 is not a good way to handle anything in relation to that. And then there's also some last minute Trump uh, policies that took place before Biden stepped into office that uh, dismantled some of the systems that are very important for handling uh, migrants, such as, for example, can, I, can I just ask, what's your what's your contention with Title 42? Because as, as I understand it, we're, we're only doing that because of COVID, wasn't it? Well, no, it's been used for like four years of Trump as well, and it's garnered a lot of international criticism. So, for instance, the United Nations have come out and say that the current handling of the status of the southern border, and especially the invocation of Title 42, may be violating international law. And that's from like a UN spokesperson. So there seems to be uh, some issues in regards Rose to that. Rose, uh, before uh, I assume Title 42 is going to come up um, more uh, than just this one time. If you could, if someone could please read that and then link it in chat for everybody uh, yeah. in, my t in the Twitch channel, just so they all understand uh, what we're talking about when we refer to Title 42 uh, for the purpose of this conversation. So, I'll look uh, it up and I'll read it. I got it right here. Oh, it says, yep. uh, the program allows the United States Border Patrol and U.S. Customs to prohibit entry of a person who potentially poses a health risk either do by virtue of subject to previously announced travel restrictions or because they unlawfully entered the country to bypass health screening measures. Thank you, Biggs. All right, we're now going to throw it to Sprout, then Nacho, then Rose, then LSP, and then Zan. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, also, everybody. That blanket uh, is amazing, by the way, LSP. I just want to tell beautiful, you Beautiful, isn't it? It is, it is. If it was Hans's Thank face, you. though, it would be better, but that's I definitely not his tag. I don't know. My, I, I, I've been told my face is like my worst feature. I've, I've been told I have a butter face, but like, but They're like, liars. This, but, but, but this is for, but this is for the six. Uh, this is for the six of you, all of you. Uh, we, we've literally been doing this for thirty minutes. We have ten minutes left for the, the general. Would everyone want to extend this by, let's say, like another fifteen minutes? Because I feel like this conversation is like pretty good, yeah. and we're probably not going to be able to get like everything that we said. All right, cool. Uh, so it's pretty clear at this point we're not going to get to our bonus third topic. Uh, but I appreciate the good, the good conversation that we're doing uh, with this one. So uh, go now that everyone agrees with that. Uh, go ahead, Sprout. All right, it'd be a butt his face, but um, it's okay. Um, so. I, I think that legal immigration should take precedence over illegal immigration. Um, illegal immigrants, if we don't have spots for them in our country, should not be here. Um, 
and then if we do have spots for them, they should immigrate legally. If we're talking about the, if we're talking about how many people, how many legal immigrants we take in a year, because there is a cap to that. If we're talking about raising that cap and accepting more legal immigrants per year per country, whatever you want to do legally. Um, I think the conservatives would be for that. It's the part where it becomes illegal immigration because most illegal immigrants don't get vetted; otherwise, they'd be taken. Um, if they get through, they don't go to a vetting station. They just literally just in true. our country illegally. I realize the max amount of illegal immigrants to actually have a, got a uh, green card and then stayed past their amount of time or got like some kind of scholarship uh, sometime yeah some type of scholarship to let them get in or anything like that but i think that i'm focusing on the we're all focusing on the wall so what i'm saying is that they come in non-vetted we've all agreed that it's bad but then you guys want to say that everyone goes to vetting. Not everyone goes to vetting. Like it doesn't make sense. And that's why conservatives are like against um, illegal immigration. All right. Thank you. Sprout. Uh, go ahead. Nacho. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot there. Um, so yeah. So I think the rhetoric ha does have a bit a, a big issue to play um, as far as like playing a role in, into like how many people are coming in here. Yeah. They didn't know who was going to come in here, but um when you have when you have what looks like you know the way the behavior that Donald Trump was displaying and the way he was like talking about the immigration and all the shit that he said, it was really easy for people to be like, oh, okay, well, obviously, you know, everybody hates this person. Like this is this is what the the majority of the country wants. Uh, so I, it it makes total sense as to why people would search the border, and not just that. Uh, regardless of who is going to be in office, you have the issues with, and I think that's what why title 42 is even being talked about is because you have people who are running from situations where, which I understand, like I get on both sides of the coin. Like I want people that want to be here, here, but at the same time, it's like, we do have a, a legal system that we have to go through. And there are a lot of ways that we could probably in, improve this. And like all memes aside, uh, yeah, I'm for the wall and, and maybe some kind of way to, to have people come into the country and, I don't know, work for immigration. M maybe that's a way that they can uh, help speed on the process because that's another part of the problem. Sorry, real quick, but another part, of the, another part of the problem is how long it takes to get through the immigration progress. Like there was some talk earlier that, um, where we were talking about uh, basically people not knowing the law. That's a big part of this too. Uh, so there are there are routes that you can go through. There is like asylum. There are ways that you can like request uh, whether you're being like abused or whatever the case may be, there's there's ways. Um, there's a lot of situations where people get into where like they're illegal and they're being like literally held hostage by like an American citizen. Like there's all kinds of like these little loopholes and laws that allow you to come to uh, law enforcement and basically seek asylum here. But it's not like really popular and it's really scary to try to approach one of these avenues because if you don't do it the right way or so many of them, if you don't do it the right way, you can be shut down for another five years or you, you can be put further back in the line. So a lot of this has to do with like the, the red tape that is our, you know, all of our immigration law combined. So thank you. Not uh, yeah. uh, Zan, did you have a quick like question or response or were you just raising your hand to be on the list? Cause you're on the list. Yeah, I, I raised it earlier, but we're getting a little further away from the thing that I wanted to uh, respond to. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm jumping if, all over the place because so much was said. But <laughs> if you if you want to like briefly say, I felt your like thing, I was too. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, oh, so so the the purpose of uh, for Zan for everybody else, the purpose of the quick responses is to ensure that um, you can you can ask like your question before the conversation moves too far away. Um, because I know like Zan probably wants this question answered, and it might be important for the conversation. So it's better for you to like to do like the the, the brief interruption, say quick response answer this question instead of like say waiting 10 minutes whether you either have to like derail the conversation you have to go back 10 minutes or you just never get your question answered so zan uh feel free to answer to ask your question right now before we like move any farther away from this and then everyone just keep this in mind uh for the rest of this discussion that's the primary purpose of quick response because again like uh I, I know that this is a bit more uh, structured, so like you can't jump in all the time. So I would prefer you ask a quick response like immediately, as opposed to say waiting ten minutes for your turn and then like going after somebody and asking a question that you probably should have like asked to be clarified like at the beginning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, go ahead, Zan, with your question. Yeah. So I forget who it was. I think it might have been Nacho who brought up that um, 
the, under Biden, you've seen a, the talk about immigration kind of change a lot from when it was under Trump. And I want to point out that, um, yes, during the election, it did seem like the Democrat nominees and uh, especially Biden and Harris were way more on board with like, OK, yeah, l let them in or whatever. Um, but especially since they've gotten into office, they haven't. They, they've been mostly the same on most of their positions. There was a, uh, a clip that went viral of um, Kamala Harris saying, do not come when she was visiting, I think, Honduras. And people have tried to call it out as like hypocrisy, like they flip flopped or whatever. But um, the, the broader context of that is it seems like the Biden administration is more focused on trying to solve the issues in the countries where these asylum seekers and uh, immigrants are coming from more so than trying to keep them out. And most of the um, discussion happening back when Trump was president was about the flagrant language he used about illegal immigrants and the type of um, uh, hysteria that he was bringing up within a lot of his base. Not so much the idea that like anyone who isn't in favor of illegal immigration is a racist and needs to be flogged. How, how are they, how are they um, trying to fix that, though, besides just well, going and doing talking points and things like that? Because I've so seen them. Honduras, brainstand. they're doing a multi-billion dollar bill that they're going to be giving to the Honduran government, trying to restructure it to try to help with the uh, corruption uh, from the gangs down there. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Zan, uh, for the question. That's like what we did with Afghanistan. Give them money. All right. Thank you, uh, Zan, uh, for the clarification. Again, that's kind of how you do it. If you have like a specific thing you like want to ask, make sure you get that while it's happening, so the conversation can keep growing and keep moving along. All right. We're gonna go to Rose Wrist, and then LSP, and then back to Zan, and then to Biggs. Uh, go ahead, uh, Rose Wrist. Yep. Um... Before I start with the main things, just to mention some things that uh, Biggs was talking about, like, oh, how is the government doing that? Part of this 21-step plan that the Biden administration uh, put out in regards to immigration include a bunch of points on that specifically, so I can read the headlines over these five, six bullet points. Number one, providing humanitarian support to address the acute needs that pressure individuals to abandon their home. Number two, expanding access to international protection. Number three, establishing migration resource centers in the Northern Triangle. Number four, restarting and expanding the Central American Miners Camp Program. Number five, expanding refugee processing in the region, number six, expanding access to temporary work visas in the region, and number seven, reducing immigrant visa backlog. So those are just a few solutions in this new 21-step plan. And then there's this thing that Xander brought up with the Himdoros that's also, um, yeah, pretty interesting. Um, now, this is often something that's talked about, and I somewhat agree with this, that like, oh, you know, like left, you know, leading people there say they want to change the process, but I don't have any really like suggestions on how to do it. And I agree that that's something that happens often. So here's a few long-term solutions for this specifically. Number one, abolish a drug war. Number two, uh, leverage uh, trade agreements that you have to have more international collaboration and programs in order to fund and balance out, uh, you know, sort of like geopolitical or pressures in between these countries that may force people to migrate between the three different members of the bill and completely rehaul the immigration processes. So provide an easy path for naturalization to currently residing illegal immigrants, because after all, illegal immigration does not exert a threat to the United States of America. If we're talking economically, if we're talking through crime, it just doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, making legal ports of entry is a lot easier and grant better fundings to expedite those processes, allow for more people to be accepted for instance, like refugee programs and revisit uh, Title 42 and stuff like that. Now, another thing that I will talk about a lot, and this is often the case, is that the, the yes, handling CNG. between sort of Trump and Biden during the border is kind of equated, which is not really the case. There's a bunch of significant differences between Biden and Trump's handling. So, for instance, the process for admitting kids is expedited dramatically. So they aren't at these camps for as long as they were, nearly as long as they were, for they're like 20 uh, percent uh, there for um, for 20% as long as they went to Trump. So that's one thing. There's non-separation of families at the border. There's task forces sent to reunite families that were uh, taken apart during the Trump uh, administration. And there is more policy to allow asylum seekers to remain in the US, US during processing instead of having to remain in Mexico or wherever while they get processed. So yeah. Um, uh, generally, also, I want to say this as well. The wall was mentioned. I had a Rose hard infraction. Last point. F finish your, finish your this is my um, When the wall was mentioned, I had a hard infraction. I really want to talk about the wall at some point. So if we can put a uh, pin in that. I'm, I'm uh, here for it. Yeah. Pro wall. I'll I'll wall all the way, baby. All the way across. We can, uh, we, we, we can uh, maybe like have, have a small discussion. Fake the news. Wall. Fake news. We need a wall as big as China's, okay? Actually, wait. Bigger than China's. We have to beat China, okay? It's got to be bigger than China's by at least... 50 feet, then we will show the America is the best. Higher, like, country. long, because I feel like if, like, 50 feet longer, the, both like, the Hans, long time isn't, Hans. like... I, Hans, it's both, okay? I want it going into the ocean, <laughs> and I also want it higher, okay? I, That's actually a good impression. I was gonna that say... Was, that, yeah, was, that was crazy good. Oh, my yeah, God, that was fun. That was, yeah, that was pretty good. That was, that was a banger. All right, LSP. 
Go ahead, buddy. Oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to top that performance. There's a lot I wanted to respond to, so maybe I need to use the interjection button more often. But Biggs, um, so the, the response I had was Biggs, because earlier he said, we need to improve the process to make sure that you know we're, we're, we're controlling for crime. Um, I did not say uh, crime. I did not say that. I wrote down what you I said. said stream, no, no, that, I said streamline. Actually, I, I'm actually for improving the speed at which people can become Yes, citizens. I did note that. Right. But I, I didn't say anything about crime. Okay. Streamlining crime like rhyme with each other, so I'm, I might have. Sorry, been, sorry. Okay, I just I want to be... clarify. I, mean, I mean, I know other people brought up crime, but I did not bring up crime because I know. That's might a have you I know else. that's what a I wrote. I wrote, you need to improve process to make sure no crimes coming in. Why are people coming to America? And then you said refugee laws says they're supposed yes. to stay in the first safe yes, country. That, I did say that. Yes, that's America. correct. Okay, so we'll then I'll throw the crime thing out because I think um, Homeboy Rose Race more or less addresses the crime thing pretty succinctly. Immigration just lowers crime. It just does deal with it. Um, but when you ask, like, why are these people coming to America? There's a there's certainly an economic angle that compels these people to come to America. Um, and your 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 remark on refugee law is wrong, right? Act refugees are not required to go and stay in the first safe country. Um, I can give you a citation on this if you want, uh, but that's just not the case. Um, so there there is an economic benefit to these refugees coming here. Uh, that actually is borne out. Immigrants do come here. Refugees do come here. And it tends to improve our economy. Um, so if your issue isn't crime, it might be economic. But I might wonder, what would be your qualm with these people coming here in the first place? Um, do I still have time directly? to Yeah, do I still have time to go on? or? Um, I, I, I see you and Biggs are having a back and forth. So I'll give you, uh, I'll let him respond. And then I'll let you have like a, a, a brief closing okay. word. Because yeah. this was, I wrote down like, there were like two things I wanted to like go on, but okay. so basically, I'll, I'll just be real quick. So basically, my whole thing is like, I want everybody that wants to come here to be able to get a chance to come here. I think we need to make a, a process by which people can be um, able to be brought into America and become mm -hmm. citizens. And I think that um, there needs to be some type of level which we either have like a um, system where we have people that are more um, beneficial through like merit. But I also think we obviously have to have some type of thing for like refugees. So that's why we have this like levels of like how many refugees we accept, how many can, immigrants can I, we accept, things like that. Object? Sure. Well, I might question you. So hypothetically, the Mexican government doesn't want to deal with these people because they got their own problems. What happened? Sure. Right. So you have to contend with American Nacho, the likes of American Nacho and Sproticus, I think, who would be the most aggressive against these sort of people. I might ask, what would your response be if what do you mean these, these people, the, these you know what I mean. I'm, what what I'm, would your what what I'm would kidding, your I'm kidding, sorry. what would your response be uh, if I told you that there is compelling evidence that these people will suffer serious injury to their body or maybe even death if they are deported? Would you would that change anything about like your your opinion? I I I want to appeal to the humanitarian side of things, but I don't think that's an excuse for people just to come here and just get in for that reason only. Okay. What would be but a good reason? Like, I'm curious. Pardon me. What would be a good enough reason for you? I'm curious. Why would you? Why would you? So would you what, what I would say is, if you like, they have. All, you, can I respond? I'll let I'll let you go, go ahead, Zach. Yeah. Like, go so I think that these people have already gone through Mexico, right? So it's not like they can't get out of their country and out of where they're at. But I agree that people need to be able to come to America because I think immigration is good. I'm actually I'm a libertarian and I want people to be free. So I think everybody should be able to be free. But we still have to have a process. And I think that's where the, the left and right divide is, is how extensive that process needs to be. And I fall somewhere in the middle. Like, obviously, I think that a lot of people on the right just want it to be very strict and like literally just like the best of the best can only come here. Right. But I understand that there's low income and there's low skilled jobs that need to be filled here. Right. We have farming, especially like we have a lot of agricultural jobs that are done by migrants. We have a lot of uh, other low skilled jobs. Right. So we need some form of like, um, of employment and of, uh, employment and employable population. Right. And right now we have a, uh, um, a deficit of that right now so i think it's good to have um immigration right because that fills those roles but i think there also needs to be a process and we need to have rules and limitations depending on what type of situation it is and if you have a refugee we can only accept so many refugees right because if we literally opened our doors to every refugee from every country in the world it would be unsustainable right why why do you think we can only accept some refugees like what are do we running do you out of not space? think I that there would be a it. ridiculous strain if we literally let every single refugee from around the world come to our country don't you think that influx would be detrimental overall like in a mass rush like i think we need to have a 
steady trickle, but it doesn't need to be a floodgate, right? Like, I think there needs to be a happy medium. Talking of floodgate, person. we're talking Haiti, right? Like, right, right. we're talking Haiti specifically it, for this not, thing. Well, I think it was general. Wait, 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 guys. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, I'll give you both like one no, more, like, start, start, like, like, thir- like 30 seconds for this, and then like I think Rose just had a quick response that you yeah, want, want to get in. Uh, let, let me right, just say then, one thing, and then yeah, yeah go ahead, Biggs. So I know we're talking about like specifically this like 10 to 15,000 people in Haiti under that bridge in uh, uh, Del Rio, Texas. But we're also, you have to you have to consider that there's literally hundreds of thousands of people coming across every month. That is not sustainable, right? Like I obviously, we have to have some level of control, but I, I think, and I agree with you in this respect, we need to have a process that gives people the chance to get citizenship, but you can't have just an open border policy here. That would be detrimental. I think a good controlled flow would be best. What that is is debatable, and I'm not like a professional on that subject, so it would. Be, I, I don't know what the you know hard number would be, but there has to be a happy medium. Okay, so I'm go actually going to uh, pull moderator power and table this because this is explicitly relating uh, to topic number two, which is about uh, the responsibility of the United States and other nations to help. Uh, people from like war torn or from natural disaster affected areas so let's table this and bring that back for uh topic number two uh, because we're starting to bleed we're starting to bleed into that so if uh, we're dropping this can i ask my second question because i never got to it's it's, 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 it's been about five minutes so like it it, please keep it very keep keep it very quick like unless it's like it's super quick it's just a nacho because earlier, Nacho, you said uh, Biden campaign said during the campaign, you said the Biden uh, Biden campaign said for everybody to just come in. Right. Just immigrants everywhere should just come in. Right. Um, I'm wondering I, if you can I mean, provide me a source or because I'm w- willing to bet that's not what they said. I, I mean, I don't think I said they said that word for word. I, I wasn't stating that as like a quote. I just said their rhetoric and their, the attitude of Democrats and the, the Biden administration, like while campaigning can, was basically. Can you give me an example, like, please? Just so uh, I can see uh, what we're, uh, we're talking about. Uh, okay. uh, Nacho, you don't have to do that right now because I don't want to. I don't want to hold the panel. It was just a uh, general yes, information yes, of, of the rhetoric. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Please, uh, like, find like the source, sure. um, and then like uh, send it to uh, yeah, whatever. whatever. And then when you're, and then, then like when once you find it, uh, we can read it, and then like I'll yell at each other about that. So uh, Rose, Rose, you had like a brief contention, uh, thirty to forty-five seconds for that. Then we're gonna throw it to Zan, then Biggs, then to Sprout, and then Nacho. So go ahead, uh, Rose. So to be clear, just so we can contextualize like the refugee intake of the United States of America currently, it's at like 40,000. So right now, uh, the Biden administration said uh, that they would be accepting around 60,000 refugees for this year. Uh, if we look at comparable numbers historically, we can see under the Obama administration, when the population count just generally in the country was far lower, the economy was smaller than it is today. Um, like in those situations, Obama had it at 100,000 or 110,000. So there is no good like reason for why we shouldn't at least be able to like double it, so to say. And that's like a conservative guess because um, yeah, it's 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 shrunk massively over the past uh, over the past decade. So there's definitely a lot. Of place to improve we're not talking about taking everybody in from all across the world plus not everyone even can come here if they're like a refugee like people that are refugees in like you know uh yeah like central asia or southeast asia aren't gonna like just take a plane over to the united states of america it's gonna be very difficult but yeah thank you rose all right we're gonna throw it to zan then biggs uh, then sprout then nacho uh, go ahead zan biggs yeah oh what's up biggs disappeared yeah, big, big, big's got up, but it, but it's uh, Zan's turn. So uh, I'll, I'll throw it to Bigs like after Zan is done. And if he, and if he's not hit back in time, we'll just throw it to Sprout instead. Uh, go ahead, Zan. Okay, so are these closing statements for the section? Oh no, um, we have uh, we have about seven minutes left in the general. So I was just gonna let the four people that were on the list uh, go, and then uh, we are gonna go to closing statements. If anyone wants to get on the list, uh, in this case. Uh, LSP or Rose, if either of you want to get on the list like right now uh, to say something, and then I'll put you on, and that'll be the last part of the general before closing statements. Do either of you want to be on the list? Uh, As for what's being said right now, I can wait until the closing statements. Okay, I'll, I'll put LSP. Okay, I'll wait, I'll wait to closing too. Wait, actually, you're right because okay, just general. All right, all right, Zan, uh, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, all I really had to say um, is just like a summary, um, I suppose, of my opinion on this, since there's nothing in particular I feel is noteworthy to call out at the moment. Um, I think that there are so many other things that we could be focusing our resources on rather than trying to tighten, um, you know, like our border patrol and security at the border. Um, just better ways of solving these problems because if we don't then we're going to be having this conversation forever We're never going to stop having this debate. It's going to go on and on and on and on. We're never going to stop 
Um, I think our resources should focus more on trying to help these countries, um, obviously trying to help out with like rooting out corruption in the government. A lot of criminal gangs have like these governments in their pockets, uh, especially like in Mexico and um, obviously Hindar Honduras I brought up earlier. Um, yeah, that, that's that's more or less all I have to say. I, I don't think that building the wall is a good idea. It's just a waste of resources when most um, illegal immigration is happening by overstaying work visas. Um, this has been true since at least 27, 2017, since uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, it just seems like a waste of time to try to expand uh, security in this way. All right. Um, okay. And then, uh, thank you, Zan. And we're, uh, Biggs is not here, so we're going to throw it to Sprout. Um, and then, about, as for the wall, um, we're currently go going to be a bit over time. Uh, so are we comfortable going for like longer than what uh, like it's normally said? Because I normally try and keep it about two and a half hours. This is going to be pushing three. Is everyone okay with that? We push four. Okay. It's fine. I mean, like, all right, I mean, if you guys want to be all over night, like, I'm not going to stop you. Because um, I know y'all wanted to talk about the wall, and that wasn't a topic. So if, if so, if we want to make that a topic, like, a, like say, like maybe have like a 30 minute like m m like like baby topic in the middle of the, t of the two main ones, uh, we can absolutely do that as well. So, um, uh, Biggs, Sprout, then Nacho, go ahead, go ahead, Biggs. Yeah, so I sorry, I'm an old man and I had to use the restroom, so I didn't catch. Oh, I'm holding the, in the shit right now, buddy. Like I'm I, like I'm, I'm <laughs> asshole is clenched. Go ahead. Don't worry. I can mod for you while you're gone, Hans. Trust me. <laughs> give me, just give me ad just give me and we're fine. Okay, we're fine. So, um, like I kind of was saying, um, before to kind of get back on the actual topic, because I know Hans didn't want us to go into the next topic yet, but um, from what uh, LSP was saying about the um, border patrols, um funds and things like that going up. I think that's a good thing. Again, like I said, I think the fact that we've seen such a failure on the government side to disabled. control this type of uh, situation with the border and it's making the states have to do things like LSP or uh, like uh, Rose Riss said earlier about the, I think it was like Project Lone Star or something like that. Um, I think that the government really needs to do more because we're not only endangering these people but the, um, the, the the law enforcement officers as well, because we put these people in bad situations and things like that. But like the the people are struggling that are coming here, right? And I think that obviously we need to take care of them, but we need to have more funding for things like uh, counselors and people that can help them complete the process. Because I think that one thing that people always assume is the um, the amount of money is going to like literally like the people that you saw in those videos with the on the horseback and they're trying to deter people from crossing the border. I think more money needs to go on the actual like legal side of helping these people file the paperwork and things like that so they can actually achieve what they're looking to do. But I think that's the bigger issue that we're lacking now. Um, and if we can institute more of that, I think it would be better for everybody involved. Because I, I do think these people coming across will be good benefits to society. We've seen time and time again with studies that immigration does improve the economy. Obviously, having more people, having more money to spend, as long as they're being uh, productive people in society, hey, chat, you guys that's what we're looking for. And as a libertarian, stream. I want people to be free. I want them to make money. I want them to provide for themselves and help improve everyone's life. Um, L LSP, I know you raised your hand, but uh, we're currently... I got about to run over time for the general anyway. So if you like to briefly, briefly respond to like Biggs' thing that he asked you about, answer only that. Don't say anything else, and then we will go to the next part. We go to Sprout oh. and then Nacho, and then I'll give everyone. I, I know everyone has a lot they want to say, so we'll lengthen the the closing statements even more. I promise. So uh, I'll make it as quick as possible. Yeah, I'm always intrigued by a libertarian who thinks it's the way to help people is by growing law enforcement. Right? You say border patrol budgets going up, and that's a good thing. This argument is akin to defund the police. It's the issue is what Border Patrol is doing. Those funds are misdirected because the problem at the border is a political problem and not a law enforcement problem. I, I literally right? said that we need more people working like case working. Right? And I was getting to that, but that's, that's okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just want to make sure I'm clear what you're, you know, I don't want to be misconstrued is all. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you both. All right. Sprout. Um, I just find it really funny how, uh, Everyone's bringing up like overstaying visas as that's the large amount of illegal immigrants. Um, I think it's a little bit disingenuous to bring that up considering the massive security risk we have with undocumented immigrants uh, just coming over the border and the lessened security high. risk we have when people overstay their uh, green cards. You see this massive difference in uh, the risk we're taking when that happens. And yeah, so I think like, it's more it's infinitesimal. I think it's more correct to be crossing the border. 
push towards fixing the border issue versus fixing the overstayed visas issue. All right. Thank you, Sprout. All right, Nacho, last word in the general, and then we're moving to closing statements, starting with Zan and then going in the opposite direction of where we started. So, Nacho, uh, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, so the, the Biden thing, like, there was, like, some things that I think he said during debate or something with Biden specifically, uh, like, like saying something about coming in or something. I can't find the exact thing, and the only quote is from, like, a Fox News article, but I'm looking for, like, the transcript for the, like, original debate. Um, and then I guess it was on his website. Just get it to me to, later, dude. Just get it to me later. Yeah, the web the website said uh, was like there was like a quote from the from his actual campaign website that was like uh, something about welcoming uh, more immigration and and asylum seekers and something like that. So it's like to someone who is just looking to come over the border, of course that's like oh yeah, well they, they it's just going to be fucking wide open, man. So um, yeah, I. That, that that's really and more when i'm speaking on that like it's more broadly like democrats in general and their rhetoric i think was generally irresponsible and you had everybody in the and the whole fucking team coming out to come to bat for for biden because he couldn't really come out and speak he was too busy in his fucking basement so you know right, thank you nacho we're now going to move to closing statements so everyone will get 80 seconds uninterrupted please try and keep it uh below that below that um, we're going to start with uh, Zan, and then Biggs, and then Roserist, and then Nacho, and then LSP, and then finishing with Sprout. So, if someone ats you during this, someone could say that you're a big, dumb, dummy fuckhead, and uh, you're not allowed to respond. There's no, uh, there is no responses for ats in this, so uh, use call, this wisely and be I careful. I can call everyone a big, dumb, dummy, dumbhead because I'm last, so they would have no response. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Zan. True, big brain. I mean, Dumbhead starts flying. You say whatever you want to say about everybody and everything. Go ahead. I hate everybody here. Nah. Um, nah, so my main issue um, that, we're, that we're getting to in this debate uh, seems to be that we're putting some, like, moral uh, weight on people and whether or not they're a citizen. Uh, it seems like most of the problems that have been pointed... Sorry about that, push to talk. Seems like most of the problems that have been pointed out here are all things that we already have issues with here, um, and the, the immigrants coming over, illegal or otherwise, aren't uh, are doing less of the bad things than, than native citizens here, right? Like, they're committing less crime, they aren't causing as much trouble. Um, it just doesn't really make sense to me that it's, it's this hardcore party line on the right that, like, we have to be a against um, illegal immigration this hard. Like, I do agree that there is some responsibility that we need to have to maintain a secure border. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not sure if I'm 100% 100% on board with open borders or anything like that. Um, but I, I still don't understand why the right um, s tends to go so hard against it. Now, some might say racism, but I'm not going to accuse everyone on this panel of racism. I think more of it has to do with, like, there's an expectation that you have to be against it. Because I find with most conservatives who really think about it for a while, illegal immigration is nowhere near as big of a problem as it's been made out to be. Thank you so much, Sam. Biggs! Yes, I'm gonna try to get back to the the topic at hand. Um, we have uh, a border patrol. We have ICE. We have other policies, other um, institutions that work with people on the border and immigration and stuff like that. Right? I think we need to have a better infrastructure. Definitely, I think we have uh, need to have a better um, process in general of handling these people, and that will include things like having caseworkers for these refugees, for these immigrants, um, and things like that. Um, I think that if we can do that, and like I said before, I'm kind of addressing LSP's point, and I know he'll have a chance to respond back, is as a libertarian, obviously, I do want small government, but I do think this is one of the most vital um, functions of government is maintaining sovereign borders. So that's why I find it, it is important. Again, I'm like I said, I'm kind of like a practical libertarian. Obviously, like I know that things in absolutes just don't work so we need to have a common ground and i like we can all agree on we want to help as many people as we can i would like to see as many people wanting to come to this country be able to get citizenship but i think they need to follow the process stick to our laws and that will be the best way and if we can improve that and streamline that to make it easier and quicker so people aren't waiting in this line for years and years that would be the best option but we do have to have some type of a filter to make sure we don't have bad actors and things like that coming into the into the country thank you so much biggs all right, Rose Rust. 
Yeah, I mean, most of the things uh, I've already said, I've gone over the list of like like long term or like like systemic uh, structural solutions to this like two or three times. So I'm not going to just repeat that again for my closing statement. The one thing I, I will say, though, is that it keeps being said, uh, it's been said multiple times now that like, you know, undocumented immigrants, so that's like a big threat or whatever, but this hasn't been established or substantiated at all yet in the debate. So I would call upon people who say that to try to demonstrate that in the first hand. Now, to be clear here, OK. Um, I don't like undocumented immigration. Now, I do recognize that it doesn't have a harmful effect when it comes to either crime or economics, but generally, hey, I would prefer it a fuck ton more if these people were legalized and if they were documented because those things when it comes to crime and when it comes to economics, the positives they bring as being undocumented immigrants just become exacerbated and just become even better uh, when they are actually legalized. So sure, I, I would prefer, you know, like not to have undocumented immigration, but then the reason why I would prefer it is because then legalization would be even better, not because undocumented immigration is, ma uh, is bad. At the end of the day, I would a uh, thousand uh, times, like sure as fuck, rather have an undocumented immigrant than a deported migrant when it comes to, from a humanitarian perspective or when it comes from like a like sort of like US um, development, crime, you know, economic side of things as well. So, yeah. Thank you, Rose Rist. All right. And American Nacho. Uh, yeah. So I think it's always funny whenever this gets brought up, like that, that there's not there's nothing to, so to source that um, illegal immigrants don't uh, commit as many crimes. Of course they don't because we don't know they're here. So there's no baseline to 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 judge no. this off of. There's nothing for us to say like, oh hey, well well this is how many citizens live in America. We know these all these citizens live here because they're legal citizens. There's nothing that we can look at and say like, oh this is how many illegal immigrants are here total, and this is how many illegal immigrants commit crime because they're undocumented. So I, that always gets tossed out. And it's always like prove it, prove it, prove it, and I'm, it. It's just bad, okay? We we want legal immigration. We want people who want to be here here, and I don't have any problem with that. Um, the whole like something was said earlier about like only the best of the best. I do share some of this sentiment to some degree, but only because like we're and and I think this is what even though or maybe it wasn't what Biggs was intending, but I think this is what I thought he was intending when he asked like why are they coming here? I think he was just trying to get the left to admit like. That this is this is the best fucking country on the planet, and there's a reason why they want to come here. We got the best of the best. We got all the goodies in the house, and so there is some there is some reason to be like, hey, let's let's be careful about who we bring in here. We don't want to bring people in here who are gonna fuck this shit up, you know. Regardless of where on the planet they come from, we we do kind of want the best of the best. So I understand that, but I I'm I'm also on the sentiment of like the biggest problem. I think one of the biggest problems with immigration is is the, the point, process buddy. itself. Yeah. You're so is the process itself uh, being as complicated as it is? It kind of drives the illegal side of it because instead of going through all the paperwork, it's easier to just go pay the cartel, and that is an unfortunate problem. Thank you, Nacho. All right, LSB. Uh, yeah. So I think I'm gonna echo ultimately what um, Alex and. Um, uh, Rose Wrist have echoed, and by the way, Rose Wrist, you are phenomenally good at this. Um, immigration Rose lowers cool. crime. Immigration grows the economy. That doesn't mean that no immigrant, you know, no immigrant ever commits a crime ever. That's not the case. So, of course, a non-zero number of immigrants are going to commit crime, right? And that doesn't mean there's not going to be any negative externalities from uh, immigration to the economy. There will be, but all in all, immigration grows the economy, and immigration lowers crime. So the basis for the, this severe opposition to it is just flabbergasting and confusing. The, it has so many more pros than cons. I don't know how conservatives can can own all the negatives for guns and realize it's a personal liberties issue, but not with immigration. Big says, I'm a libertarian, but the purpose of the state is to maintain a sovereign border. No. Purpose of the border is to denote where jurisdiction ends. It's not to limit or hinder the rights of people to travel. Um, American Nacho says, there's nothing to source that illegal immigrants do not commit any crime. Um, that's not true. There's a National Academy of Sciences mega study that looks into basically all of the analysis on immigrant crime, illegal immigration included, and it finds consistently that immigrants commit fewer crimes. If you want the proof, I'll be happy to provide it for you. But you can't say there is no proof. There's plenty of proof. I, I don't want to say other than you're just not that well read on the literature, but maybe we'll get to that. Thank you, LSP. All right, final word on this. Sprout, go ahead, buddy. Okay, so I just, I, I can't understand why this is not getting through some people's heads that the reason the right is scared of uh just open open borders the reason scared of open borders and 
just the constant inflow of vetted or unvetted is that people are going to go buy unvetted. If we just open this shit up, if we don't keep border security where it needs to be, uh, people are going to go buy unvetted. And when people go buy unvetted, we then run that huge risk. Um, and it's the same risk that I was referring to, that the uh, illegal immigrants who overstayed their visas, who overstayed their green cards, uh, it's, it's, they have much less of a risk than people who enter our border illegally because uh, they entered our border illegally, just overstayed. Thank you, Sprout. All right. We are now going to have a five-minute break. Uh, we will re return at 9.35. Uh, take a piss, take a shit, uh, get some water, get a drink. I'm going to grab a beer. Um, I will be back. I am not going to mute everybody. So I swear to God, if someone says something that's TOS or racist or some weird shit while I'm gone, I will be extreme. Like, you think I'm Joker right now? It's over for you. All right. So I'm, waiting for, I'm, I'm waiting for him to leave. I'm waiting. Has this been changed into a drinking stream, Hans? Is that what you're telling me here? By getting a beer? I just want to, uh, it's a fucking Saturday night. Let me have a fucking beer. Jesus Christ. What are you hey, this, is my, this is my day off, We've man. devolved into a drinking panel. Okay, I work like 60 grass. hours a week, and man, I'm trying to have a beer, bro. I know, I also work a lot every week. <laughs> I will say that Hans is one of the hardest working Twitch streamer panel hosts of them all. Dude. And he definitely deserves it after this last week. Yeah, now had, get okay? up and go get a beer, Hans. Oh, get that beer. Right. I do go get a beer. It. Go get a three beer. Laugh. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be real though. I definitely uh, I was scrambling to put this together at the last minute because I was a little busy for the last couple like, couple That's days. I'm the I was really I'm struggling the to feeling. put it together at the end. I'll be right back. Everyone, be good while I'm gone. Oh my legs, my hammies are so sore. Oh. I'll rub them Hans for you. Gone, that guy's yeah, biceps have biceps. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Now, now that Hans is gone, I'm gonna say some wild shit. All right. <laughs> 